your sister, Bernie Benoitis, entered the family of the church through the waters of baptism. And so we begin here, you can hear this baptismal part. We begin by standing and praying in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of the Lord, the Lord God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. As we bless our sisters, earth, your names. As we bless our sisters, earth, your names with these baptismal waters. We remember that it was the waters of baptism that Bernie died with Christ. She rose with him to the new life. May she now share with Christ eternal glory. And Savior Scripture tells us over and over again the Lord is kind and merciful. Bernie is in the hands of his loving God, and we who are left behind hold the sure and certain hope in the resurrection to eternal life. And so, yes, welcome. Well, my friend, thank you for being here to celebrate my beloved woman, our friend, Bernie. I'm grateful to God for the beauty of, of, of this day and the time we have to be together. So let us raise our voices and join in singing a song that meant so much to Bernie. It's kind of, uh, in many ways, maybe like her theme song because she was such a minister of hospitality, welcoming people as they came to the church. Probably people that she wandered through the neighborhood of beloved, her beloved Chelsea. Just that person of hospitality. So let's sing our song. All are welcome in this place.
Indeed, all are welcome. Today we're blessed here on the altar we, to be, uh, to be jo- un- joined with Father Tony, Tony McGuire, Father Donald Godfrey, and Father Jean Savar, all who had a special place in Bernie's heart and a place in Bernie's life. Each one of us gathered here. Bernie made a difference. Her goodness, her joy, her sometimes kind of wicked sense of humor, it affected us all. She did bring a light of warmth and welcome into this, into this sanctuary, also into the sanctuary of the world, into her neighborhood, among her community. As we give thanks, as we begin our prayer together, as we gather to celebrate Bernie's life, to thank God for the gifts of the days that we have with her, to ask God to welcome her home, and to comfort those who grieve and mourn. Yes, Bernie's was a life well lived. A life filled with love and many blessings. She was faithful, and I do know that our lives, our church, our community are better. Better for having known her, better for her having passed by this way. And so we pray. Loving God, to whom mercy and forgiveness be all, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant, Bernie, whom you have called out of this world. She put her hope and her trust in you, so we ask that you carry her safely home to heaven, where she may enjoy her eternal reward. We ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot the plant a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to dare tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. There's a time for everything under the heavens. The word of the Lord.
A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest, who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the air with them in the clouds to meet the Lord, to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Gospel of the Lord. He's never named that scripture, but that is kind of the name that history, I guess, has given him. How do we know where to go? We, we, we don't know where we're going. MHR is our home. Bernie, for so many years, and I've known her well, almost eight years that, that, that I've been the priest here at MHR. And so many stories, so many little encounters with Bernie. I know her as that person who welcomed people into church, who oftentimes told them where they needed to go, what they needed to do. She was good at giving directions. Now, Bernie, I will never forget the many encounters I had with her, especially in the neighborhood, which was with her, with her sweet, loving little dog. Okay, I must be thinking of someone else because Chelsea wasn't necessarily so sweet and so loving. In some ways, I thought of Chelsea as that child that only a mother could love. <laughs> but Chelsea, and she did love that little dog. That little companion of hers, Chelsea, brought so much joy and purpose into her lives, or to her life. I remember so many times her disciplining Chelsea, telling her she was being such a bad girl, and she needed to mind her manners. She never really did, but, uh, but, but that never stopped Barney from being hopeful that one day her little girl would, would be better. Now, Bernie, she believed in this place. She believed in her church. She had such love for, oh, for us, for the people of God, for this family of faith who today gathered in this sanctuary to celebrate her, to celebrate her life, and to remember and to give thanks. Yes, we say it, we proclaim it, our motto even, MHR is our home, and all are welcome in this place. Bernie knew that this home was a good place, a good place as she evangelized by being here, being a member of the community, by being one of those beautiful smiling faces that we would encounter as we walked in the doors of the church. So home was such an important place to Bernie, and now she is in that home, as Jesus tells us, that home lovingly prepared for her in my Father's house. And we believe in those words of Psalm 23 that Jesus, the good and gentle shepherd, who we actually celebrate this weekend because this is Good Shepherd Sunday, this fourth Sunday of Easter. So we, we believe this good and gentle shepherd has led our burning home. Home to that place of love. Home where there will be no more, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more worries, no more, no more warfare, no more fear. There is a time for everything under the heavens, and now it is time for Bernie's eternal reward, her rest, her eternal love. And also, I believe her, her support and her continued support in prayers for us, her little family of faith, in this 
little church is not afraid to try to do big things. One of Bernie's friends said that frequently, Bill Osuna, who we said goodbye to some time ago. Bill would oftentimes say that about most Holy Redeemer. Bernie liked that message and that image of us as a little, a little church that's not afraid to do big things. She looked at us, she looked at the church, and she saw all that was good. She saw, certainly, I'm sure, I'm sure she saw things that were challenged, that could be better. But those were the things that she highlighted or talked about or expressed to me concern of. She was grateful for the work of this parish and grateful for the many, many encounters and friendships she had through her being a part of this family. Now in Bernie, there are many, many stories to be told. I only know a few of them, but I know um, one of our good friends knows a bit more than I on the story of the life of Bernie. So Nick, why don't you tell us, uh, reveal with us for a bit of, a, a bit of what, you, what you have to share about Bernie. Where do you go? Oh, sorry, it's hiding from you. Yeah. <laughs> We are here today to celebrate our friend Bernadine Anna Benunos, also known as Bernie, the woman with the white dog. I want to father, thank Father Matt, and Father Tony, and Father Donald, and Father John for coming to celebrate with us. Father Matt, thank you for coming back early from your vacation. I appreciate it. Father Tony, from driving up from that tenuous 101 going north. For Father John, who came from Connecticut to be here with us today. And for Donald, who had to drive from the Holies of Holies, the University of San Francisco, all the way across town. <laughs> and to all of you who are here today to take time to celebrate Bernie. We are grateful and we are pleased. We have all experienced our friendship with Bernie in a variety of different ways. Here at Most Holy Redeemer's Parish, she was a member of our parish for over 40 years, part of the Hospitality Committee and the Social Committee, always with that wonderful smile and wonderful welcoming. She was active until most recently. To the Castro community, she was the lady with the little white dog, Chelsea, who walked around the block daily through neighborhoods with a pleasant smile and a big hello and always asking for a cookie for Chelsea. To old St. Joseph's Hospital staff, where she was an awesome nurse who loved her patients. She was active there for over 30 years. And at Patrick Office Supply, her customers were attracted by her friendly smile and pleasant manner. Once you were a friend of Bernie, you were a friend forever. In the last few years, Bernie depended on her various friends for various activities. For taking her to church, Olivier and Gray, thank you. For walking your dog, Jeffrey and Carl. For shopping, Wallace and Bill. And her friend Walter would fill in every, whenever necessary. And for Jim and I, it was doctor's appointments with her or doctor's appointments with Chelsea and shopping occasionally. And then there was the Cuco and Charles who made themselves available whenever Bernie needed help. So the truth must finally come out about Bernie. She had a problem. She was an addict. Her drug of choice was haagen ice cream, vanilla, Diet Pepsi, and Jesuit priest. <laughs> she loved them all, especially the two Jesuits, Donald and John. Father Tony, she thought you were the most courageous person for what you did during the AIDS crisis. Starting the hospice across the street, she loved you for your presence and spirit and keeping Most Holy Redeemer alive when it was going to be closed. If it's not for you, Tony, her beloved MHR Church would not be here today. And Father Matt, she respected you and appreciated your keeping us together in a most difficult transition. She especially appreciated your continuing legacy that Father Tony had started, and that was 
all are welcome in this place. Bernie was the daughter of Joseph and Anna Benones, born in Shenandoah, Pennsylvania. She had a little sister who passed away at seven years of age from the flu. And this is why Bernie wanted to be a nurse, to take care of children so they would not die early. She also had an adopted brother who was actually a cousin, a cousin of her mom, Anna. Her father delivered cold in the area and her mother was a stay-at-home mother who took care of children while their parents worked. Bernie graduated with honors from high school when was accepted on a full scholarship to nursing school in Philadelphia, where she, she completed her training in three years, not the customary four. After 10 years of nursing in her hometown, her mother encouraged her to spread her wings, and so she moved to San Francisco, where she lived for the next 48 years. Yes, she lived in the same apartment that she moved into, where she originally paid $215 a month, and got very upset last month when her landlord raised the rent to $701. She thought that was outrageous. She had a great apartment with a wonderful view of Castro Market, where she loved to sit in the morning and the evening, having coffee and watching what was going on. After her father died, Anna came to San Francisco to live with Bernie, and they were a fixture in the neighborhood. There are many pictures out in the North X and downstairs that gives you an idea of her Castro world. And many of you are in those pictures, and we hope that you will take some of those home. If you see one you like, please take. Because it is Bernie's directive that all, when all of this is done, that everything that you had in pictures and mementos should be burnt. Four years ago, she found out that she had terminal cancer, and she made the decision to, name it, to let it take its course. She was alert and clear thinking about this decision. And now fast forward four years, when the cancer had spread and was very causing her a great deal of discomfort. Her doctors again encouraged her to have treatment. Again, she said, no, just keep me out of pain, she would say. We had a doctor's appointment about five weeks before she passed with her cancer doctor, who told her the cancer had metastasized and it was in her entire body. And she said, that is great news. I will be going home to see my mom, my dad, and my little sister. I was sworn to keep this news between us. And so now, Olivier, Wallace, Jeffrey, Carl, and Wanter, that is why I did not tell you and said nothing. I honor her request. She asked the doctor how much more time she had, and she was a form three to eight weeks. She accepted this with her usual smile and good nature. The doctor then said, I think I should give you a physical. And she said, why? <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> no. And no meant no. So we went back to her room at Coventry to assisted living environment where she was. She said, no more walks, no more promises to take me home, just keep me out of pain. She said, no more visitors, just leave me alone, please. Of course, that did not happen. She continued to receive guests. Joe Cooper came from New York. Olivier was there every day, faithfully, as well as Wallace, Bill, and myself. After a few days, she requested to go back to the hospital so she, if she could see if she could go into hospice care. They said hospice care was now appropriate. And by the grace of God, coming on hospice across the street was available. Olivier made the arrangements, I signed off, and the rest is history. After a few days, she lost conscious, and it was just time now. Many folks came to see her. She was rarely alone, even though unconscious. I flew back from Los Angeles to see her and spend the evening with her, and hospice allowed me to spend the night in her room.
One learns a lot about a person when you need to clean out their apartment and pack up their life of 48 years. She, throughout the years, remembered her childhood parish, St. George, a Lutheranian parish in Shenandoah Pacific, where she sent a $500 a month check every month for the past 48 years. For the most part, we have honored all of her requests. The services here or today are what she requested, even to the point that she requested a very tall, good-looking young man to do singing. I informed her that I was not available. <laughs> and she met you, Matt. She loved your voice. She loved your voice. Our closing hymn today is a favorite of hers, We Turn to You, O God. A reminder of what happened to the people in Lithuania after World War II and how Russia overtook their country. She wanted to make sure the people of Ukraine were remembered in her service. I hope each and every one of you will take a time to look at the pictures and take those pictures which you would like, because she would be honored if you would do that. There's a little note on her hospitality pen that says, death was a blessing. It came as a friend. We want to thank all those who made this possible. We want to thank all of you for coming. For Duggan's Mortuary, for Most Glory Redeemer Church, for the staff, for Father Matt, for Rhonda, for Michael Palma, Will, Michael Kirkland, and Michael Price. Bernie in her last days at Coming Home Hospice, and for the people at Coming Home Hospice, and Father Matt, for you visiting her so often at the hospice. To Jimmy Lagos, who put together the poster board out there yesterday, and for all of you for being here. May Bernie rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to us, do not be afraid, do not let your hearts be troubled. I am with you always. Bernie lived this aspect of her faith, bringing Christ's love into a world so sorely in need of love. The notion of prayer for peace, so tired she had seen in her lifetime so much division, warfare, violence. Let this be a time, a time for peace. So we make that a significant part of our prayer. Let us pray to our loving God with the trust that he hears all of our prayers. We pray for Bernie, who in baptism was forgiven, was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may be admitted to the company of the saints. Together, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who mourn Bernie's death, especially family and friends, that there may, they may find strength and consolation in the hope we have through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who care for the ill and the dying. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that it may be a beacon of light to the world, serving all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Ukraine and an end to the war, for our nation and our community, 
that we may set an example to promote peace, end hunger, homelessness, and poverty once and for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our loved ones who have gone before us. Lord, give them the reward of their goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of us here today and for all members of our church that we may be prepared for the hour of our death when God will call us by name to pass from this world to the next. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of love and mercy, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister, Bernie. Keep her safe, welcome her into your kingdom, and grant her the fullness of redemption. We ask this in all of our prayers, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, O Lord, life is changed but not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for those in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are praying. that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the leaders of all the faith traditions and people everywhere who inspire hope in you. Remember your servant Bernie, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
I worked at the University of San Francisco uh, for eight years, from 1999 to 2008, um, Father John Savard, and I helped out at this parish during that time. But I haven't really been back since 2008, and so I turned to Joan and said, why do you think Bernie asked that I be here today? What did she see in me? She said, I think she liked your humor. <laughs> and so I just wanted everybody to, when it's time to go, make sure you have a stand-up comic at your funeral. <laughs> it's what we all need. And I just think that hopefully we can continue telling those stories of love and joy. Because that's what I remember of Bernie, and I think that's what she remembered of me, of love and joy. Uh, let's continue to uh, tell those stories after the service is over, and we can join downstairs. Love God, love your neighbors, you love yourself. And Bernie is the great model, the great model of how to live that, that foundational piece of our faith. She loved our God. She expressed that through her devotion and her presence here. She loved her neighbor by being a good neighbor, by being a presence in the neighborhood, in our community. She loved herself in the ways that she expressed her love and her care for others. And it's very appropriate that this is a, the Mother's Day weekend that we celebrate Bernie. Now she never had was a, she never had a child of her own, was ever a mother, but she's a mother figure to so many through her care, through her through her healing touch and healing presence. The way that she cared for family and friends, the way that she cared for her dear mom, the way that she showed care, the ways that she welcomed us into this place that she and we lovingly call home. So yes, my friends, there is much to celebrate. There are many stories to be told, many memories to be shared. Let us continue praying now for Bernie and for ourselves that we remain grateful for the gift of life. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for our sister Bernie, whom you have called from this world. Grant that she will pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. May this Eucharist cleanse her, assure forgiveness where needed, and raise her up to eternal joy in your presence. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Bernie. May our farewell express our affection for her. May these our sadness get strengthened us in hope. For one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which covers all things destroys even death. It's
our sister Bernadine in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings that you bestowed upon Bernie in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain. Help us to comfort each other with assurances of faith and hope and love until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever and ever. Amen. My friends, in this party, in this party our liturgy and our faith remind us Yes, if we're burning with her, for her who life was no more, that she was on forever with Jesus and all the saints in heaven. And then it really come to basis when he when he expressed all so many words of gratitude and so much thanksgiving for the, the support, the love of the many people who have helped, helped Bernie along the way and helped us to continue to be a family of faith. That celebrates life and celebrates each other. It's something they pretty much thank everyone, except, of course, he didn't thank himself. And there's much to be thankful for. Nick, we could all, and Nick in our end age, we could all do well to have a Nick in our lives. Nick took care of Bernie, such a faithful friend and faithful companion. He was there by the side, he helped her. Through some difficult decisions, difficult moments and times. He was there, he was present, he was faithful, and he was loving. Nick, you're a good friend, and for that, we are all grateful. Thank you, Nick, and God. Yes, thank you. It's a word that cannot be said enough. Thank you, everyone, for being here to share your love and support for Bernie. We will miss her. She was so present here in our faith family when we would be gathered here in the sanctuary or through the live stream. Your presence, your presence is great comfort. And so, friends, as we take leave of this place of prayer, we ask God to renew us in our faith. And there is an opportunity for us to continue sharing the Eucharist. As we go downstairs after Mass, uh, there, are, there are box lunches and just a time to kind of relax, have a little lunch. To be together for a bit to continue our celebration for Bernie. And of course, all the masses as we get to remember their Bernie as well. As we take leave of this place of prayer, we ask God, yes, to renew us in faith and hope and love. As we go with gratitude, we carry within us the love, the joy, the goodness, and that welcoming, hospitable spirit of our dear, dear friend and sister, Bernadine. Error and notice. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of all my God descend upon you now. May the blessing remain with you forever. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And as today we go in peace, give me thanks to God for the gift of life. Give me thanks to God for the gift of burden. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
to the water, if you so dare to. And then we'll make our way downstairs to the parish hall. You go elevator, stairs there, or we're outside the room. So we're now here to continue to celebrate Bernie's life.